Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates. This evening we're going to be updating you all on winter storm uh, Viola um, uh, with the polar vortex over the top of the United States and then we'll have a look at the uh, British weather as well briefly at the end. Remember if you like my videos make sure you do like and subscribe as it really does help me out. Now currently it doesn't look too severe over America at the moment you can see where the polar vortex has, has been, it's still uh, a sort of a trough of low pressure, up a trough, but it is starting to move back towards the Arctic and starting to warm up a little bit further southwards, but we've still got a, quite a major winter storm, winter storm Viola, um, out towards New York at the moment. If we put on the upper air temperatures, it's still, still quite cold, especially during central parts of the United States. It's very cold on the surface, but the upper airs are alleviating a little bit, which is a sign that the weather patterns have started to change, and I suspect milder air will be coming in over the next couple of days, and you can see still reasonably cool but for milder it does sweep back in but it does look like there could be another potentially area of heavy rain and heavy snow coming up um as you see it just drifting off the coast of america coming up towards this weekend i.e friday night into Saturday, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Uh, but in the longer term, it does look like it will generally go quite a bit milder, especially for further uh, further south, uh, especially parts of Texas, Louisiana, which has seen some very remarkably cold weather. Still does look like some bitterly cold air is going to be over towards Canada. Perhaps northern parts of the United States, you can see potential for another blast of bitterly cold air coming up. But doesn't quite make it uh, much further south than the Canadian border with this current GFS run. Now, if we have a current, uh, currently have a look at the, uh, the radar, this is the live radar from the Weather Channel. You can see this is winter storm uh, Viola. You can see the main initial front, the heaviest snow is now sort of towards Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York. It's dropped a lot of snow as it comes up the coast. And you can see a lot of other snow, snow bands are further inland. Not going to drop as much snow, but still could see a couple inches quite wide, uh, quite widely. And you can see the, uh, the potential for another system to develop. You can see this rain and snow uh, further southwards. And that's going to be driving northwards again. It's going to give another wave of snow for more northeastern areas. I don't know if this is going to be named as a different storm uh, to winter storm Viola. Uh, it could be, um, but considering it's part of a similar system, it's sort of a secondary low developing uh, from the trough. Um, I don't know if it'll be named something different, but still heavy snow in parts of Texas, and I suspect this will be moving off in the next day or two, and they've seen a lot of snow in these areas. Quite unusual, um, very unusual to see that much snow, but well, they have seen it. Um, and as we head further northeast, you can see more heavy snow and but heavy rain and thunderstorms uh, towards the coast. Now, if we have a look at this, the past 24-hour snow totals, you can see where the winter storm has tracked from Texas all the way up towards New York, and you see you can see that bullseye line where it's lined up and it's given some very significant snow totals: 20, 30, 40 centimeters. Even parts of New York seeing another 20, 25 centimetres as well. And I suspect there could be more on the way with that secondary low developing. You can see where that's, we've seen that snow in parts of Texas has been quite localised, but very heavy where it has fallen, hasn't moved uh, too much. Beyond that, you can see still a lot of snow uh, for quite widely. Yes, not huge totals, maybe four or five inches uh, plus, but again, still enough to cause disruption with the bitterly cold air. A lot of ice around indeed. So a very snowy spell of weather coming up. Uh, well, there's been and continuing, especially for parts of northeast and parts of the United States. Now, if we have a look at the future uh, 48 hour snow totals. Um, this is for the future 48 hours, and you can see snow diminishing further southwards and westwards. Still some snow over western parts of America. Again, not too unusual uh, coming in on the mountains. There could be another winter storm developing there potentially, but it's looking like the upper uh, level uh, cold will diminish. So if it does develop, another low develops, it will most likely be only snow much further northwards. But you can still, st still see there's still a lot of snow to come for parts of sort of Nova Scotia, uh, Boston, New York, uh, many parts of New York State, Pennsylvania, Vermont, New Hampshire. Um, 
maybe even parts of Portland as well, getting up to Maine, could see a lot of snow, and even parts into parts of Canada as well, could see a good few inches of snow, so still a lot of snow to fall, on already uh, quite uh, icy and snowy surfaces, again, could cause a lot more disruption, so very interesting to see what's happening with that. Now we'll have a look at the current uh, GFS run. Um, this is the current GFS run, but we'll be looking at the European side, so the UK. And I can see this current GFS run, the 12Z, has actually gone very cold uh, at the end, and it could be showing one last wintry blast for Western and Northwestern Europe. But as you can see at the moment, it's very uh, cyclonic with high, uh, low pressure out in the Atlantic. This low pressure being powered by the jet stream and by those winter storms coming out of America. Um, it's going to stop this high building over towards the UK. So it's going to go very mild in central parts of Europe. But for us, we're going to stay on sort of the periphery of that very mild air. And it does look like we're going to have uh, some milder air in the southeast, potentially getting up to maybe 14, 15, 16 degrees, but always showers and rain around. So unlikely to feel a particularly uh, warm or sort of heat wave like where it could be um, towards central Europe. Again, more system for, uh, systems are coming off the Atlantic, providing more rain, but again, still generally mild. And as we head towards uh, middle of the next week, again, bouts of heavy rain, high pressure continually trying to build in. And towards day 10, it actually does start to build over top of the country, potentially creating a little bit drier, um, but uh, still a bit wet and windy in the west. You can see there's a bit of warm air advection going on there with warm air pumping into the Arctic. You can see getting quite warm around parts of Greenland. And you can see very cold air towards Scandinavia. And you can see that there's this weak little high building. Um, and this that is the start of a quite significant Scandinavian high, which is potentially um, favoured in the longer term. Again, it's longer term weather patterns, but the long range models are not predicting massive blocking, but at the moment the blocking they are uh, potentially looking at is towards Greenland and northern Scandinavia. So this is not a total write-off and not a total anomaly, but it is on the very cold extent, uh, extension or extent of the uh, GFS ensembles. As you head through towards the end of the run, big Scandinavian high, and we do get a sort of beast from the east pattern with a low fixed in uh, towards the center of it hitting into the cold air producing copious amounts of widespread snow you see bitterly cold air heading into the uk and we would be going back into the freezer um with heavy heavy widespread snow it would be a historic event if that came off with bitterly cold upper level air and heavy heavy snow and if we put on the snow depth you can see the whole of the UK is pretty much caked in snow. And if we zoom in a little bit more, um, and we head right towards the end of the run, you can see 20, 10, 20 centimetres quite widely. Perhaps for eastern areas, not as much, but many central areas, well, uh, Wales, Scotland, Northern England, parts of Ireland, Northern Ireland, and parts of southwestern England, 20, 30 centimetres of snow uh, in localised areas and 10 to 20 centimetres widely. Again, it's one GFS run and it's for the first week of March, so it's quite far off. So I wouldn't take it as literal, but again, it just shows you the potential that there is still the chance we do start to put in some very cold easterly winds towards the uh, start of next month. But again, it's not a favoured outcome and it's really just something to watch as we head into the shorter term. The ensembles will keep hinting at the potential for a colder return towards the end of the ensemble members, but it keeps getting pushed back. Uh, we really need to see it come into the more the 10-day time frame instead of the 14-day time frame to start to get excited about anything. If we have a look at the GFS uh, upper air and precipitation ensembles, you can see generally above average with the sort of a zonal sine wave i.e. warmer sector, colder sector, warmer sector, colder sector, then it goes to around average as high pressure tries to settle down, especially in the southeast. And then you see those copper on some members going brutally cold, especially with that GFS operational line. As I said, it is an outlier, but there are other on some members going quite cold as well with that. But again, similarly, other on some members remaining fairly mild. Quite a decent uh, general trend, especially in eastern areas, I suspect. Um, 
Going a lot uh, drier. Still a few rain rainfall spikes around, so low pressure is never too far away. But generally not a massive deluge like it will probably be in many western areas where there are yellow warnings over the next couple of days for heavy rain. Again, over sort of hilly, hilly and mountainous areas. So nothing too unusual for them, but with snow melt uh, and already saturated ground, could be a bit of flooding here or there. Um, we'll update that if anything more dramatic happens. But yeah, interesting to see what happens with that GFS operation run. Again, it is an outlier. You have to call it an outlier. But I'd say it does have a little bit of a support from some of the other ensemble members for going for a bit of blocking and some easterly winds. And it'll be very interesting to see if that does come into fruition uh, and does get any more backing uh, over the upcoming uh, few days. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe for new and I'll see you again uh, for another video tomorrow.